All right, Jeff, do you want to go ahead and uh, kick us off, please? Yes, and I want to thank everyone for coming uh, tonight. And uh, what we want to do, and this is show you a year in review that one of our members, Steve Frank, put together. And it starts out with uh, how we met Tiffany uh, at an event in Brighton that she was uh, co-sponsoring. And uh, how we progressed, even through COVID, how our meetings have progressed and with the help of our members, we, we feel as if we got a lot done. And hopefully this spring, we can actually do the action items that everyone's looking forward to doing. So with that, we're gonna start with the, a year in review video. Thank you, Steve. That was awesome. Yeah, good job, did Steve. A really good job. All right. Well, yes, thank you, uh, Steve, for pulling that together and everybody for sticking with us through um, the, the craziness over the last few months. And um, uh, like uh, Jeff said, we'll be talking a little bit. Um, we're going to have the first part of our presentation uh, where we're going to learn a lot of great eco-friendly do-it-yourself uh, gift ideas. And then the second half, we'll spend really talking about um, really where we're looking to go um, and some action for uh, 2021. So with that, I will hand it off to uh, Tara to share some ideas with us. Hi guys. Um, so I'm going to cover three things with you today, how to make laundry soap, dishwasher detergent, and hand soap. The ingredients may seem overwhelming at first, but once you get your you know, little ingredient list and um, supplies, you'll be ready to go. Um, so the first thing is laundry detergent. A lot of people can add essential oils and they do um, like lavender, you know, make it smell whatever way you'd like. I don't. Um, and I think our clothes smell great. So <laughs> the first thing that's on the list is Felsnepa soap. And it looks like this. 
when I first started out, I didn't know what any of this stuff looked like. So I brought my, all of my ingredients so that you can kind of see what it looks like. So when you go to the store, you, you know what you're looking for. Um, one thing before actually I start to, um, I started with this book, Hooked on Aromatherapy. Her ingredients are simple. Um, it's easy to use and it gives you a little more confidence when starting all of these different things. She has a lot of great recipes in here. Another thing that I also just got from the internet is um, it's a list of essential oils. It has all of the different essential oils listed in here. It kind of tells um, the properties and health benefits. So if you um, start making things and you want to substitute, like maybe use a tangerine oil versus a grapefruit, you know, you could always reference this list just to make sure you're getting the same health properties and benefits. So back to laundry detergent. Again, this is HE safe. I grab this from the store. What I do is I double this recipe and it fits in here. Reused a little scooper from somewhere else. When you use the laundry detergent, just make sure you put it actually into the barrel of the washer, not into the little drawer. For a large load, two tablespoons, you can always use less. And then I just put my little tacky label on the back. You can make them look much prettier than that. Um, so Felsenepa soap, you want to have it graded. Um, kids enjoy doing this. So if you want to have them help, you can definitely do that. I get them this little glove. It's a cut free glove. So if they accidentally, you know, scrape their hand, they, they're safe. So definitely do that. Once it's all graded, I just put it in a bag so that you don't have to grade it every time because that's the most time consuming part of making laundry detergent. You then want two cups of borax. This is what a borax box looks like. And then you also want your washing soda. Again, you can pick these up at your local grocery store. If your grocery store doesn't have them, Ace, Lowe's, um, Home Depot, all of those places should have it as well. For extra cleaning power, I use OxyClean. Again, you do not have to. Everybody probably knows what that looks like. And then baking soda. You can get a little box of baking soda for 99 cents or go for the big guy. Since you're making stuff at home now, you'll have more to work with. So then all you have to do is grate the, grate the soap, mix all your ingredients together, and then add your essential oils if you wish. All right, the next thing is dishwasher detergent pods. Again, you're gonna need washing soda, baking soda. This time you'll have to go to your fridge and get some lime juice. You'll also want lemongrass and grapefruit oil. I'll show you these. When you're buying essential oils online, make sure um, you go with a trusted source. The Now brand is good because you actually get 100% essential oil. It's not you know, already watered down or oiled down. Again, be careful when you're using essential oils. You never want to use them full strength and put them anywhere on your body. They do have health properties, but always make sure you mix it with water or oil before applying to your skin. Otherwise, it could make you ill. Again, when using essential oils, you might need a pipette just to get it out. Um, depending on what you get, you might be able to just go like that and it will drop out. Depends on the brand and the bottle type. With detergent pods, you're also gonna just need some regular white vinegar and then ice cube trays. The best ice cube tray is this one with the little circles. It's like the perfect size. I also use this because I double, sometimes triple the recipe. Um, just be careful when you're packing the solution down in because they do stretch and it could start to get too big. I also have this one, which is like a regular ice cube size. I would recommend only filling it halfway though, because these tend to get too big and don't fit in the little compartment. So then once you have your ingredients, just mix your washing soda and baking soda into a mixing bowl. I don't use any of our stuff in the kitchen. I actually just went to the dollar store, um, got some dollar store bowls and pots and pans and all that kind of stuff so I can keep my stuff separate. Once you have your washing soda and your baking soda mixed, you can add your essential oils. And then you'll slowly pour in the vinegar. Because you're using baking soda, when you mix baking soda with vinegar, it starts to bubble, which is, again, a great thing if you want to clean out sinks. Just pour some baking soda down and add some vinegar, and then it creates this chemical reaction. Once you add the um, vinegar to the bowl, pour slowly so it doesn't bubble too fast, and mix it. You're looking for a consistency like wet sand. And then once you have that wet sand consistency, go ahead and start putting them um, into your ice cube trays. 
because you're using um, washing soda, be careful if you touch it. I recommend using gloves because it could kind of burn the fingers. So that would be my only recommendation on that one. All right, eucalyptus antibacterial hand soap. Again, if you look at the ingredients, it probably should be called peppermint antibacterial hand soap because there are mostly peppermint oil in there. And again, looking at different oil properties, you can mix this up however you want, however you want it scented. Uh, my husband works in, you can almost say construction. He's uh, works, he does electrical work for the trains. His hands get very, very dirty, greasy, grimy. He's used on dish soap and everything else to try to get the grime off his hands. And he swears by this. He tells all of his friends, he's like, this is the best soap ever. So toot toot my own horn on that one. <laughs> So the first thing on the list is the natural glycerin soap. They used to carry this at the grocery store. I don't know if you can see it. It comes as a pack of three. So just I just do the unscented. Again, a pack of three, I get it on Amazon now, which is where you can get most of your essential oils too. Five cups of water. Again, once you make it, none of these recipes can you mess up. And you can adjust however you want. I sometimes do less water. Sometimes it gets too thick. So, you know, you kind of just go with it half tablespoon vegetable glycerin. Vegetable glycerin comes in a bottle like this. Again, now product, 100%. Vitamin E capsules, again, that's just actual vitamin E. When you're ready to add this, you'll basically just take the little capsule and then get a needle or a pin or something, and then you'll just poke the top, and then you can squeeze it all out. So first thing you'll have to do is grate your soap, again, Dollar store grater works fine. Add your water and your vegetable glycerin to your pot. Heat that over low, mix, 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 and then pour it into your bowls. I, I think I quadruple the recipe. And when I pour it, they fit into these two bowls. Again, I add less water to make it thicker though. You're then gonna let it sit out for at least 12 hours. I usually make it, you know, midday. It's ready. You'll see when it's ready because it becomes like thick and milky and kind of springy to the touch. Uh, once it's fully set, go ahead and mix it with an egg beater. You can mix it by hand. Then you'll add your essential oils, your vitamin E, and then go ahead and fill all your, your soap containers. And then if you're gonna save it, they say to store you know, in a glass bottle in a dark place. So I always keep it in the, uh, in the cabinet, but I didn't have a glass bottle because I try to reuse stuff that we were getting rid of. So I just kind of made my own ghetto little bottle. <laughs> <laughs> I darked it out with some um, duct tape and just wrote what it was. And again, depending how much you make, just make sure that you have enough bottles on hand because I do make so much. I fill all the containers in the house and then I can fill this whole thing and then about five other bottles. So just keep that in mind. Cool. All right. Well, thank you, Tara. Does anyone have any questions before we move on? Are the oils interchangeable? Like, do you know the purpose of the oils? Is it just to, or can you use other oils? Like if you wanted to use lavender oil in the bacteria, so or are those oils part of the cleaning solution? Some of the oils are for cleaning, like the antibacterial and stuff. A lot of the oils that are selected actually have antibacterial properties. So again, you can add you can add more lavender to it. Lavender has its own um, properties as well. It's really up to you what you wanna do. Um, again, this list was so handy, just right off the internet as well. So when you're looking to make it your own, I would just recommend if you still want it to be an antibacterial soap, to choose one of the oils that still has that antibacterial, antifungal or whatever you're trying to do um, property in it. Any other questions? Cool. All right. Well, thank you again, Tara. And um, we're going to move on to Holly. So I feel kind of bad because Tara is so specific and I'm not going to be that specific <laughs> because this is the recipe. Can you guys hear me okay? I have this really cheap mic. Yeah. Um, cheap. Uh, I mean, good recipe that Ren Hack uses. So I was trying to do a vegan one and not this one. So my first tip is don't bother searching around the internet. Just use this one <laughs> that she said because I made a different one. And then it was a little too oily and I would have had to keep messing around. And um, I kind of miscalculated how much 
these ingredients would be. It really wouldn't be that much because these wraps are like 18 bucks for three of them. And this says it makes two, uh, two or three 12 by 12, but I have to think it makes at least three because the amount of oil or amount of wax I had when I did the one that I didn't, that didn't work, covers quite a bit of stuff. So, um, so, but it's very easy. The um, ingredients are here, but what I would say when you're doing the cotton, you know, just use like a sheet, you know, a cotton sheet, something you have. And if you don't have anything, you'll have to go buy. But, and I think the thinner is good because once you get that wax on and stuff, you don't want like a bulky bulk. And um, so the, all the products are online. It would just depend ingredients, you know, where you got it from. If you're an Amazon shopper, you probably get them all at the same time so that you didn't have to pay shipping. But it would be the same as what I did. It was very easy. You just melt the stuff. Like when you read, I put the link on there, but when you read the directions, it looks kind of like, yeah, but they just, it's one of those blogs. It's, it's just too wordy. I mean, all you do is basically melt it and then you have a designated little paintbrush, you know, and you put your fabric out on a parch parchment sheet lined um, cookie sheet. And you only, you saturate, but just like one side and then make sure it's all done. Then you put it in the oven for, so it's like two minutes or something till it's like really baked through. And then you take them out. And the thing is, so you do need to set up, like what I did was I just put cooling racks on end so that they were sticking up and then just hung them there. And they literally, it's like 10 minutes. It's not like they're all over your kitchen fast, you know? But the other thing is, I think if you order the amount of ingredients that you have to get when you're online, it would make more than one of these. So let's say even if you did only get five 12 by 12 out of it, it'd still be cheaper than buying them because you're gonna get two from your sources at least. But, but I thought it was really easy. And on that same website, there is a vegan one. I just didn't try it. But I think what the difference is from the recipes I tried on YouTube is the pine resin that probably makes it stickier and you're not having to fiddle around with the amount of oil that you use. Any questions? <laughs> I don't really know. And you know, they wash the same. You just wash them in like coolish warm water and they do last a long time. Although if you pay 18 bucks for them, you won't think they last that long. Lori and I didn't think they lasted that long when you actually buy them, so. And you can just redo the same material too, like. The jojoba oil, is that for scented, is that makes it smell good or is that um, antibacterial properties or something? Does it have properties that help? Oh yeah, this so Connie, I would have to look that up. That is the one thing I yes. didn't know because I didn't order that. I think it's just like there was oil in my other one too. I just think with the wax you needed, so it, it will just flake. If there's no oil in it, it will just flake off your fabric. Uh, the jojoba oil is a carrier oil. It helps you spread out, like smooth out the beeswax. Okay. Okay, thank you, sir. I do know, yeah, that makes sense because if you didn't put that, I did, Sarah gave me my grapeseed oil when I was doing mine. If you don't have any oil in there, then when they do dry and you bend them, they'll just Flake. come off the fabric. So no. But that's not, yeah, that's not scented. And since, if you were using it for other stuff, you could put like a scented, but since it's for food, you, I don't think you'd want any kind of thing. Yeah. There. Anything oh, else? Man. And it's very detailed on the, the link I put, it's a blog, so they really go through everything. I think Jojoba is a PCM, so it it becomes liquid at, at a warmer temperature. So if you take it out, if so you put it in the refrigerator, it'll kind of harden up if you take it out, I think. I don't know, but it was a really cool that. to make because it was super easy. I mean, you yeah. literally just melt it over a double boiler. I did. Oh, I will tell you. Okay, here's the one thing that's not that easy. Be prepared, no matter how diligent you are. The cleanup is not super easy because I would do like a cookie sheet. Maybe if I was going to do a lot, maybe I'd designate it to it. I mean, because you just use warm water again and wipe it down or stuff. But 
seemed to me I got a little wax here and there and I was like, yeah, because yeah, was sticking to everything, but that was the only hard part. And then this I just threw in because these are so easy, but they're kind of fun. The body scrub literally is a cup of sugar and then a few tablespoons of whichever your oil, coconut oil would be nice for smell, but you can honestly just use olive oil if that's all you have. And you put that in and you want it to be like sand because you don't want it soupy because the, the sugar will just disintegrate, all right? So you want it sand and if you go too far, just add some more sugar. And then just put it in, um, someone made one for me one time that did have like grapefruit oil or something. Oh, it's really nice. Um, and then put it in either just a plastic jar you re we're going to throw in recycling or something or a cute little jar or something you have. And it's just, it sounds really easy, but I'm telling you the one time someone gave me some in a cute thing, I'm like, because hmm. I don't buy stuff like that for myself. So it's, they're fun to get. That's all. Oh, all right, any questions for Holly on the sugar scrub? If you want, you should, my skin is really soft. <laughs> cool. If all you right. know me, you know my skin is really soft. <laughs> all right, well, thank you, Holly. And uh, now we're going to move over to Sarah for a couple of recipes. All right, so the first one is the do it yourself hand sanitizer. I don't have all the ingredients here for this, but I have made it before. I had, you know, because of COVID, it's hard to find the 99% rubbing alcohol anywhere right now. So I had to order it on Amazon. It's supposed to be here tomorrow. I use witch hazel all the time. So I always have that. And I have aloe vera gel. You can also get aloe vera gel right from your aloe plant if you want to do it that way too. Mine aren't. I use a lot of my aloe, so it's not, they aren't that big right now. And then 10 drops of tea tree oil. Tea tree oil is an antibacterial, anti, I don't know if it's antiviral, but it's antibacterial oil. So you just mix it all together and then use a funnel and put, I use little spray bottles because I like to spray it on my hands like, when I'll keep some in the car, I keep one in the side of my purse. When uh, my husband and I, the other day we were in Home Depot, when we came out, I sprayed our hands down and we you know, rubbed them together until we got home and could wash our hands. So it does work really well. It's really easy to make. You can use peppermint oil because that is an antibacterial and it smells good. If you don't use an essential oil like the peppermint oil, the alcohol, witch hazel and aloe vera kind of smell, they're not great. So it's good to use the oil to scent it up. And that's about it. Very easy to make. Oh, yeah. Sarah, can I ask a question about that? Yeah. So does it pretty much because the aloe vera, does that just go, does it pretty much just make about two and a half cups? because the aloe vera goes in or does it actually make Yeah, them? it's really about three cups. Okay. When you're all done, three and a quarter, but- um, So it is still, okay. Yeah, and I just have, I, you know, I save little spray bottles, like the, I've, you get them over the years with different stuff in them. They're not real big bottles. And I just fill those up using a funnel and it lasts a long time. And then you can, like it says at the bottom, you can either make a larger or smaller batch just by adjusting the ratio. But the 99% is really what the CDC recommends. I know a lot of the um, hand sanitizers we get right now are the 70%. Um, they're okay, but the CDC really recommends 99% isopropyl alcohol. Jason just put a note on there that uh, the hardware stores have had it. The 99%. Okay. I checked the pharmacies, the drug stores. So good to know. Oh, around Ann Arbor. I don't know in Milford if we have it. <laughs> uh, any other questions I, for Sarah on the hand sanitizer? Good tip though uh, to, yeah, check out the um, hardware stores as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So this one uh, was fun to make and I, it's a two ingredient hand lotion and I have some on right now and it feels so good on my hands. You know, as much as we have to wash our hands right now and as much as we use hand sanitizer, I try to use it as little as possible, but I do like to spray my hands down as soon as I leave the store. Um, so I used four ounces of shea butter and shea butter is super moisturizing. And I ordered this unrefined African shea butter because I, I ordered it from Amazon, but I liked the packaging that it was in was recyclable. Um, some of the other ones come in a plastic packaging that you can't recycle. So that's why I picked that one. Um, and then two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil, but I would actually add four tablespoons. Um, I meant to adjust that because it makes it just a little bit creamier. So you take a double boiler and you put the, you, I got the, um, I think it's one pound of shea butter. Yes, it was one, uh, one pound. It looks like um, cheese, like a white cheese when you take this block out. And I just cut it in quarters. I put one quarter of it in the double boiler and then the olive oil and it melts pretty quickly. And then you put it in a bowl. I used a small metal bowl. I put that in the refrigerator to let it cool down. Then I got out my electric mixer, hand mixer, and I whipped it with that and poured it into a just a small uh, ball jar, real small one, and filled it up. And then I just take out a little on my fingers, rub it on my hands, and it just uh, cuticles, everything. It really feels good. But I did add a little bit of peppermint oil. My gr six-year-old granddaughter was helping me make it yesterday, and I let her pick which oil, I gave her a couple choices, but lavender or peppermint, she wanted the peppermint and it smells good. Cause the shea butter is kind of a, it's not a bad smell. You just kind of have to get used to it, but it's really nice if you scent it up. Any questions on that? Yes, yeah, so Sarah, um, yeah. when you make this, so this one recipe here, does it make the one small, the like the yeah. really tiny ball jar? Not the really teeny, it's like a jelly sized jar. Okay. It Very filled good. that up. Any other questions for Sarah? All right, well, thank you very much uh, for sharing those. Uh, over to Lori. These are great ideas for presents. Um, however, if you, if they're not you know, good for people, especially if they live far away, um, there's some other things to consider. You can um, consider the digital, which is like movies, you know, books, any of that kind of stuff, um, music, um, then the activities, <laughs> you can't do a whole lot of those right now, but like skating, bowling, whatever, um, services like massages, salon. Salon services. Subscriptions are a great thing. We got our granddaughter um, highlights. She just loves them. And then we got our grandson the, um, the science kits and little passports, I think they were called. And those are great. Beer of the month. <laughs> it would work. Um, or you could do charitable contributions to, um, we always do one like in our daughter's name and they come with like little stuffed animals or tote bags or whatever. So those are good. Um, if you do want to wrap, um, we've got, you can use eco-friendly materials for the paper. You can use stuff like posters, maps. Um, you could decorate your own with uh, brown paper and whatever, let the kids go crazy. Uh, for packing in the, you know, like to pack the presents, you can, what I usually do is I take uh, the paper shredder and just run like scraps of wrapping paper or anything, you know, colorful, use that. Oh, let's see. Oh, for instead of buying the plastic ribbons and bows, which I absolutely hate, um, you can use twine. They've got baker's twine, which I guess is a little thicker, and uh, or yarn. Yarn's good too. Oh, let's see. Well, you can reuse the wrapping paper like us because we're old old people. <laughs> and then um, you can recycle it afterwards. 
but the way they say recycle it, you can't do it with anything that's waxy or foil. What I read is crunch it up. If it stays crunched, you can recycle it. If it doesn't, then it's got stuff in it that can't be recycled. Okay, and you can, you can also pack them if you don't wanna pack them in boxes and wrap them. You can put them in stuff like um, baskets, fabric bags, uh, tote bags, mugs, flower pots. You can wrap them like in a scarf, anything like that. As far as cards, uh, you can, instead of using paper cards, you can consider the electronic cards, you know, the e-cards, or even, you don't know, if you want to do a newsletter and an email or something like that, this Christmas newsletter, or you can use the cards that you receive from charities. If you're like us, we've got a huge stack. No glitter. Don't buy any cards with glitter. Glitter is the devil. It releases microplastics into the environment, you know, on use glitter. You can make your own glitter with sea salt and food coloring. So I haven't tried it yet, but I'm going to. And the cards after, after Christmas, you can recycle the cards as long as they don't have glitter on them. Or if they have, you know, sometimes they have like little felt things or foil things or whatever, make sure you take those off. But also the cards are good for like for kids, for projects. They're really good for practicing cutting and their scissor skills. So I'll work on that. And that's it for that. All right. Thank you, Lori. Does anybody have any questions? All right. Um, I'm going to, to jump in and share a few ideas. So uh, one that I had uh, um, experienced this summer camping and had to get the recipe from my friend, but our fire starters. So you just take a uh, egg carton. And I hope you can see this okay because I can't see myself on here. So just a paper egg carton. And then I keep on my dryer um, just a tea box and then put in lint uh, as you clean out your dryer compartment. And you want to make sure that this is cotton or wool. So um, not a synthetic, but natural fiber. And then what you're doing, and I apologize because you, you can tell they work. I um, just have a few left. Uh, but then you're just going to stuff it with the dryer lint inside the compartments. And there's a few variations that you can do. There's uh, the dryer lint. There's also, um, you'll see on there, the pine cones, because pine cones are great that um, some people will get very elaborate and just dip the pine cone and you don't even really need the, the cardboard box. I'll just find the smaller pine cones and put them inside. And then uh, either old candle wax or crayons. I'll be honest, I haven't tried the crayon. I've always used just, um, old uh, candle wax. Um, and then a couple ways that you can do the, um, the melting part. And this can be kind of messy. So I actually just have an old glass container um, from a candle that I just put and break up the little pieces of, um, of wax and I put it on a hot plate and then it just will slowly melt. Um, then when it's ready, I'll just pour it in here. And you want to be pretty generous as you're, um, you're pouring the, the wax, whether it's over the pine cones or the, uh, the felt. Another way to do it is um, some people have mentioned the double boiler method, but it is wax and it does get kind of messy. So I'd have a designated um, pan or another way I've heard is just taking um, a tin can or aluminum can um, from some beans or something and then have that be your designated can that you can again put with a little bit of water in a regular pan and drop that in there to melt it. So then all you need to do is you just rip off um, of here uh, one of your pieces, uh, put it under your fire to, uh, to start, and they work great. Any questions on that? The wax makes it like a, a ball then, so then you take the whole ball to make the fire? Yeah, so what you would do, if you can see this, is you would then just actually rip off, including the, the cardboard. Oh, okay. And you have this like little pod. So it has everything inside and then that's what you would put in um, light, usually the cardboard part, and then that kind of takes flame. And then um, they last a few minutes, usually long enough to get whatever your smaller starter uh, pieces are going. Okay. All right. So then another one that we have done um, is do-it-yourself sidewalk chalk and so you can either make it yourself or the way that I've done it is you actually put it all in a kit so um, this was in a, a recycled pretzel tin um, and then uh, 
you just put in um, one cup of plaster of Paris. So I would then just measure this out and put everything um, in there. Uh, so I used a salsa jar, um, half a cup of water, obviously the person would add when they do it, uh, your food coloring, and then either toilet paper rolls and wax paper to make a mold, or what I found, um, you can do that, it's pretty messy. So um, I had some old plastic ice cube trays that are the long pieces and this worked really well. Uh, so then you just pour it in there, let it harden. We do it um, overnight. And the one recommendation I would say here is to add more food coloring than you think. So although the, um, chalk is when you're stirring up the plaster of Paris, it's looking pretty bright. It does become pretty muted as it dries. So um, that's one little tip that we had learned um, along the way. But um, uh, kids enjoy, I think, making it uh, as much or if not more than actually using it. So that was been, um, that's been a fun one for younger kids. Um, and when you do mix it, it's obviously just as easy as you just put all the ingredients together, stir, and then like I said, add, um, add as much food coloring as you would like. All right, so then this last one, just to cut touch quickly on, um, I went last year to a sustainable ornament making um, event that Indian Springs had put on and um, I was overwhelmed at the creativity. So um, I'm not sure if you're able to see, but up, up in the corner, uh, there was a gnome where you're just taking a pine cone. This was an old um, burlap sack that they had um, or t-shirt. Uh, unraveled yarn and a little tiny um, rock for the nose. We also did these tree cookies. So it's just when you find a down branched and these can be obviously any size, we just use very small size. Uh, you then take a, you can either freehand draw on there, but one thing that was actually very easy is taking um, little images that you can cut out. So maybe it's a snowflake. And if you color on the, um, the paper with pencil and pretty much outline the image, if you then put it down and rub it, so you're basically kind of thinking like where you're taking a rubbing and so you're either putting uh, your pencil dust on there, if you will, then when you put it down and trace over it, you're gonna leave that little trail that then you can just you know, color in with a brander. Uh, if they're younger kids, we've done them just with Sharpies um, where then they can color and kind of glue things on as well. So lots of different ways to do this one. And then the third idea they had shared with us um, was just a collection of, of seed and nuts um, and anything else that you find around the house. So this again was just um, a seed, seed pod that was found, um, an extra little batting that I think came out of uh, a stuffed animal that had uh, gone, gone away. Um, and then uh, just the little kind of pine cones or flowers so just lots of, and then you can wrap either with string or a little bit of wire on there. And then just even things like, you know, a nut that you can then um, paint, an acorn. So just kind of very simple, um, but just the beauty of, of nature all around us. So that's what I have. Any questions on those? All right. Well, that um, brings us to our Eco HV discussion portion. So we really want to talk about where we're um, where we're going this year. So, just to to refresh, and I know we have some new people uh, joining us tonight as well. But as you saw in the beginning video, um, we've been uh, it's our one year anniversary. So we're uh, very excited about the progress that we've made so far. Um, our mission is to act as stewards of our planet, to protect, preserve, and mend our environment for the best quality of life for all people. So when we think about, you know, kind of what our goal is, it really um, has been to connect uh, our, our community to nature and really by doing, doing that by um, helping build awareness with some of the issues that we're facing right here in our own um, local area, helping to educate on these issues, and then um, ideally moving towards and, and blazing a trail uh, for action moving forward. So 
We've done a really great job this year. Um, obviously, most of our uh, year has been via Zoom um, due to COVID, but we're uh, proud of the fact we kept things moving, although we've had to, to modify and obviously cancel uh, events and cleanups. But looking ahead to 2021, we really want it to be um, a year of action. And that's where we want to um, take some time. I'm going to stop sharing so we can kind of see each other. Um, and really talk uh, talk through what what is it um, that is really driving you to either join our meetings or to, to come and attend a meeting. Um, what do you care about? What are you passionate about? Um, because we are uh, a group of volunteers and obviously it's easier to get um, uh, additional support to help execute these things when uh, we're moving in a direction that people are really passionate about. So um, I don't know if uh, uh, Holly or Jeff or Lori has anything to add uh, add to that. Um, we, we really want to try and get people, uh, hopefully we can do it in the spring, to get people more active because I know everyone here, um, the environmental issues are so huge, especially when you hear people talking about climate change. You're here, what can I do about it? Well, we're trying to get people to, at least around here in our area, to help do away with all the waste we have and all the garbage we throw away, food waste especially. And I imagine there's going to be a lot of food waste coming up this winter with uh, everyone getting carry out again from the restaurants. Uh, so that is kind of what we want to do with action items to give people uh, things they can actually do to help our area out whether it's like I've been taking styrofoam for neighbors and friends and everything to recycle Livingston to keep styrofoam out of the, um, and so is Sarah. Sarah Moore has been doing it too, just to keep it out of the environment, out of the landfills. So we're gonna keep doing that. And if anyone has, after the holidays, if anyone has a lot of styrofoam after the Christmas presents and everything, if you get a hold of me through email or something to the website, I'll come and pick it up and get it into the recycle place. Bob and Connie also have a membership there. They're willing to take uh, styrofoam there. So right now we have three people that belong there that will take your styrofoam after the holidays. And do not hesitate to call us because we will take it, come and pick it up. Thank you, Jeff. And yeah, it's tough because last January we ran a styrofoam drive for our January meeting, but um, we're not uh, banking on being able to be together in January. But if you do have um, have some items, let us know and we'll be happy to connect you to um, to somebody that can take that back for you. And just like, uh, just like last year, uh, Lauren, one of our members, has offered to pick up Christmas trees, natural Christmas trees, and take them to... Uh, the parks that are accepting them. You have no way of getting them there yourself. We can get a hold of her and she can pick them up uh, from your houses. That's another thing we oh, can sorry. do. Go ahead. I was just, and also I know Jeff, he's actually talking about looking into like maybe getting some kind of recycling styrofoam program going around here, even if it's just once a month or something. Um, but if you get, I just, want to reiterate, just think about maybe a project you'd like to do and um, you could lead it through us or, you know, the thing is you may put it out and it might be someone else's passion project too. I mean, Tiffany's, the green business thing was, I was all psyched up on, you know, that's might some, you might say something that three people are like, ah, that's what I've been wanting to do, you know? So you have a group of people who are like-minded and so if you have a project, you know, put it out and see if it gets fly. Donna, were you going to make a comment? Oh, I've just said <clears throat> we could take styrofoam ourselves um, and to Livingston too, if anybody okay. wanted to. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. So yeah, to, to build off of what Holly said, um, yeah, so maybe it's, it's a passion or um, uh, another environmental organization you're working with that has a big project coming up and is going to need volunteers. We just really want to kind of build a pipeline of, um, of activities and opportunities. We are hoping to bring back um, our spring cleanup 
and uh, really try to, you know, we had plans to do it on Earth Day this year. So shooting for that next year with both a land and water um, option, <clears throat> excuse me, potentially. Um, as Holly mentioned, we also have our Great Lakes Green Businesses that was scheduled to soft launch March 20th. And um, we know that uh, didn't happen. Uh, we do want to pull together um, a committee, though, to help um, rejuvenate that. Obviously, um, you know, we wanted to be respectful this year as small business owners have had much bigger things to focus on. But as we move forward is how can we um, maybe work with them to realize um, the money saving opportunities without throwing in disposable silverware in every single takeout bag when most people are just going home to use, eat it and don't even need it. So little things like that, that maybe just a few tweaks to what our um, uh, existing framework is. Like I said, it's all ready to go. Um, COVID had just uh, put us on, on hold. So yeah, any other items? Janet. Um, I remember Jeff saying before that you guys asked that we were going to be collecting the political signs or getting with campaigns and everything. And I know I have a couple of political signs that, um, are, do we have anything set up for recycling any of that? Recycle, if, it, if they're the cardboard ones like Denise had, they, those are recyclable. They're, they're actually paper. And I took a couple into them they take the wire and the uh, cardboard. So there again, if you have them, I, I can get come and get them from you and take them in the, take them there for you. But they do recycle. Then I find out even your regular recycling will take them because they are paper. Okay. Um, I might take one of you guys up on the uh, dropping off styrofoam, but we'll okay. wait till we get it. We hardly ever have any styrofoam, but after Christmas, there After Christmas, it's going to be a lot, <laughs> especially with people buying the air fryers. <laughs> um, and Janet, just to add to that, if there's, so there's, um, we've seen kind of three different types of the um, political signs. So one is the cardboard, as Jeff mentioned, that you can put in the bin. Um, the other is like the plastic bag. Um, so similar to the store drop off, as long as it's single ply and it stretches when you go to tear it, okay. that can go to the um, in-store drop off. And then the third is the corrugated plastic right. that um, is really just kind of left in the repurpose um, uh, column of find something cool. I know there's a lot of people that have been building shelves or baskets, um, birdhouses. So uh, maybe a crafty winter project to, to work on. And if anybody has a project going and needs some of that, uh, let me know and we'll see if we can't match people up uh, with that. Lauren. Um, so I don't know if I, I'm sure if a lot of you garden, I take the, the metal pieces from those stakes and, um, I mean, from the, the, the political sign stakes, bend them and then use them to, to keep like tarps down in my garden to tomato cages, um, everything from winter. It takes a little bit of, of elbow, uh, elbow grease, but it's, it's, it's worth it. Yeah, I second use the wire all the time. Sarah? Um, during uh, Denise Forrest campaign, we used car magnets. And I saved mine. My husband asked me today, why are those stuck to the freezer and what are you planning on doing with them? I am cutting them up and putting, um, you know how you put pictures on your refrigerator? Mm -hmm. Gluing the pictures to the, you know, I'll cut them up to match the size of the picture and then they glue, right, they just adhere right to my refrigerator and they work great. Great idea. I got three also. I'm sitting in my garage right now. And they cut up really easily. So I'm trying to think just in terms of things that we had discussed um, previously. So the Great Lakes Green Businesses, green events. Um, another thing that has come up are, is local government engagement. So we have a great relationship with uh, Christian and the um, Milford Village. Um, we know that our members expand beyond uh, Milford area. So really wanna try to expand those relationships. Um, we know the Highland, um, um, is it the Hi Highland Township office is actually going under a um, kind of green retrofit. So definitely should be some opportunities there to get involved. 
so I don't know if there's anything there that, um, you know, people have connections with, or if that's a passion. Um, and then another area could be legislation and education. So I know we've done and partnered with the Sierra Club on some plastic in the spring, did a plastic uh, education um, meeting day with um, legislators. So I don't know if that's of interest to people, but those were some of the areas that we kind of heard from our meetings throughout the year. I don't know if those are still interest areas, um, if there's others. And then similarly with education, um, we had a slew of, uh, of different speakers this year. Are there other areas that you're looking to uh, learn more about moving forward into, into 2021? Pat, it might not have been on that, but if you had your hand up for a second. Okay, I'm just so impressed with all of you. I, I was at a meeting once before and that's why I'm back because my class is canceled now, my back strengthening back class. So I wanted to come. I, two things, one is that um, I know you probably all know this, but when we were doing our yard work, we were you know, having all the um, plant containers that you don't need anymore. And I thought, I, I called um, Bogey Lake thinking I could donate them to them and they would use them again, and they don't. <clears throat> but what I thought was so nice is she said, you know, you can recycle those. So I thought that was a good thing. So I did. Well, they said that. Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah, I was so glad they said that. Because um, then I said to her, I don't want to throw them away. And she said, no, we really can't take them back. The other thing, and I'm just going to throw this out, and you probably have heard this before, but I really would like, like when, hopefully when we do a cleanup this year, that young kids can get involved to get them excited about their world, <laughs> what's happening mm -hmm. to it. Um, even I, I'd like my grandchildren to know that they, excuse me, can be a part of this too. So that's something I'd like to think about. Yeah, I think that's important and definitely something we'd like to expand to. And that was our goal for um, the, uh, the Earth Day cleanup was yeah. then having different uh, prizes that would help draw kids in and, um, and use creativity. So yes, I think um, continuing to look for ways to bring in the younger generation into what we're doing um, is, is gonna be key. So any ideas that you have as we go forward, definitely let us know on that. Okay. Thank you, Pat. Uh, Lauren? Yes, yeah, so speaking on, on cleanup, and this is really, really small po potatoes in the, in the grand scheme, I was talking with someone in this group, and I can't remember who it, it was, but they live near me. And um, I live bordering Highland Rec. And the amount of trash that people throw into the park is like, just really, really honestly sad. I go and pick it up about once a, a month, but wow. typically this time around hunting season is the absolute worst because, mm. and people go out in the woods and they drink and they don't want the beer bottles in the car for obvious reasons, so they leave them on the side of the, the road. Now, one kind of cool thing is a lot of them leave them really neatly on the side <laughs> of the road so that I can pick them up. Um, but if anyone lives bordering Highland Rec or is interested in like socially distancing, meeting up and picking up trash, like for like a half hour, hour each month, that'd be cool. Highland Rec. Janet? Um, back to Pat's point about the uh, like hanging baskets and everything. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, you know, I used to, we used to live way on the east side and my school district, um, when I was teaching over there, they had a Votech center and one of the things they had is big, they had a horticulture class. Okay, mm -hmm. so the person who ran that class, um, the kids would have to plant everything. And so they would plant uh, all kinds of flowers in those in hanging baskets, and then they would have a flower sale in the springtime and all the teachers or anybody else that wanted to could just drive around back to the greenhouse and we could go through the greenhouse and pick out whatever flowers we wanted. So I had contacted the person that taught that class and, you know, this is a couple of years ago before COVID and said, you know, every year I go out and buy hanging baskets. I do reuse a lot of mine the next year by just getting more dirt and everything. But at some point you get too many and I have some, can I come drop them off? Can you use them? She was thrilled. 
because they normally have to go out and buy this, you know, the plastic containers that they can then fill to sell everything. So I don't know the school system out here like you guys do, but do they have a horror culture class? Do they have a greenhouse attached to one of the, the high schools or to a Votech center or something they like that? They have a Votech could... in Wald Lake, you know, Wicks on Wald Lake. And they have a um, like a horticulture program because they sell flowers and things. Same thing you're talking about. Okay, so that's the other thing is that um, I always keep all of the, you know, like if I, back when I used to buy a bunch of the four inch pots of geraniums to plant along the whole walkway and everything like that, I usually bought 30 of them and I would just end up having all this plastic stuff and I would just drop it off to her because she could use that for seed starters or anything else. So maybe I'll check, maybe, uh, well, now all the high schools are closed for three weeks. Um, but when things get back to normal, maybe in the springtime or a little bit before spring, it's, I'll, I'll reach out to the, because that uh, Wald Lake Western is pretty close to us. And I'll reach out to them, see if I can find out who the teacher is and see if we can arrange, so like if anybody has it. So save your stuff. Don't recycle it just yet. And uh, well, maybe we can do a drop off and they can use some of that stuff. Yeah. I think that um, someone mentioned recently Milford High School has a master gardener program as well. Mm -hmm. So maybe some ties um, there. And this kind of reminds me, another thing that has been uh, mentioned, I think at our last meeting was, um, and I think uh, Miles uh, dropped off, but um, was connecting people. So um, remind me, what is the recycle your junk? Is that right? Dot com, the website he was talking about where it kind of matches when somebody's looking for something but they don't want to throw it out. He said that the Huron Valley group is not really active. So um, I know we talked about maybe how we can better build that presence just so like that, you know, oh, I could use some of those stakes for my garden and, um, you know, I've got extra buckets from, from plants and somebody could grab them. So that might be an area too of interest that we could help build that out. I like that. Holly? Free cycle. Wasn't that called yeah, free yeah. cycle or something? That that sounds so much classier than recycle your junk. So. I kind of like it's <laughs> yeah. a little more risque sounding. <laughs> I think that, yeah, that's been out there, but I don't know how active it is. Yeah. And I think you said it was at one point, but maybe it's kind of trickled off. Um, and then another thing that I know Lauren was leading this year was um, the bulk foods co-op kind of initiative that I'm guessing we're still in a standstill on that until we clear this. Yeah, you know, I didn't, I didn't get a ton of, of, of traction on it. I'm really, really hoping that um, we can get, we can get more interest to make it a little bit more worthwhile. Um, it is definitely something that I'm interested in, in doing. I buy all of, well, pre-COVID, I bought all of my food in, in bulk. And um, not only is it cheaper, um, it's just a, a lot better for the environment. Yesterday, I went and filled up all of my holiday baking spices for like $4, like cinnamon, cloves. I mean, at the store, you would be paying five bucks a jar easy. Um, so it's, you know, it's, it's definitely good all around. Cool. All right. Does anybody else have anything to add before we uh, move on and wrap up? Okay. Then I'm going to go back to um, share and we'll just give a few updates here. Um, so I know we had shared this last month, but uh, the Our Changing Climate Art Show is um, we could use your help in getting word out. Uh, we're excited that we are partnering this year with Michigan Rock School uh, in downtown Milford and are expanding to music. So we have 2D and 3D art. The 3D art must be recycled content. Uh, and then now um, music and composition. So January, February will be the submission period. Uh, March will do selection. 
And then uh, April will run the gallery. So again, we're hoping to be back in person uh, and have galleries both at the Huron Valley Council for the Arts, as well as the Cub Gallery in Brighton. Um, but we'll also have a virtual component. So even if we are in person, we will still uh, do that. We were very excited to expand beyond the, um, the walls of the gallery last year and uh, had people uh, participate. So art submissions from um, across the, the country as well as participants for viewing and um, our gallery opening. So you can get information either from our website or by going to huronvalleyarts.org. Uh, and this is open for kindergarten through adult. Is that 3D art as well as 2D art? Correct, yep, 2D, 3D, and music. And um, either from their website or from our ecohv.org uh, website, you can um, uh, download the submission details. So it walks into great detail um, because it's all about um, really inspiring uh, people to act now and communicate the climate crisis that we're in. Um, so uh, if you go to ecohv.org, um, we have, uh, um, we call it dreaming of a green Christmas. So there's a lot of different holiday waste stats um, and then solutions. So from gift wrapping and cards that uh, Lori had talked to earlier, um, Christmas trees we'll talk about in a minute and packaging, um, just different alternatives. And speaking of alternatives, we also have uh, memory gift giving ideas. So the best way to, um, kind of reduce what we use and, and have is um, giving less stuff and more memories. So we have uh, a list there of a lot of different activities going on in the area um, that you can um, participate in or give as gifts. And then we also have some sustainable uh, event docs. So um, unfortunately, one was the um, classroom uh, um, party checklist, which uh, elementaries are still in school. So if you know someone in elementary that is uh, in person, maybe have them share that with their teacher. And then as well as um, sustainable uh, parties for you. And um, you saw in the video, Indivisible had a big party last um, holiday season and um, had one little garbage bag of, of um, waste. So that's always very exciting. Um, and so there's a lot of great tips there to help you with that. And then if you're looking for uh, some gift ideas, we continue to build out our um, favorite things document, which are sustainable gifts. And these are um, our sustainable items. These are not um, just, there's no product endorsement on any of this. These are just things that um, people within our membership and we have used and tried and would recommend. Um, so would definitely suggest checking those out as well. Uh, and then tree disposal ideas. Uh, Lori, if you'd like to fill everybody hey. in on that. I just want to say, if you don't, Jeff already said about the Oakland County Parks where you can compost the trees, but in case you don't want to do that, or if you want to do this before, um, it's really good if you, Take the old tree if you want to prop it up on a fence or even just lay it down and decorate it with like fruit and you know the little pine cones with the peanut butter and seeds stuff like that the little critters and birds can have some place to go in the winter time so i kind of like that idea and you can also um use the branches cut the big branches off you can use those to cover up your tender perennials um somebody had said that it's too acidic, but then I read that once the needles turn brown, you don't have to worry about the acid anymore. And also you can lay them down for paths, stuff like that, or you can even put them, if you don't have your compost pile started yet, you can put those down as the base. And All right. Um, Holly, did you want to wrap us up with uh, our meeting schedule? Yes, I will. So in December, we are taking a month off. And I predicted correctly that we will be celebrating. <laughs> and uh, so January 18th is our meeting date, Monday. That's a Monday. And we are having a holistic health and wellness coach come speak to us. Her name is Tatiana. And it's Healthy Planet, Healthy You. And we'd like to do like our recipe swap. Um, if you could, I'll put my email in the chat box. You could send them to me by like January 12th because then we'll compile like recipes so that night or yeah, so then we kind of have it ready. But if you have like something, you know, that you love and it's healthy and you'd like to share, that'd be kind of fun and uh, we can put them together. Is that, 
I, I should have asked you this before. Is that the best way? Could they should they email them to me, Tiffany, or should we just share a document? I don't know. Um, yeah, if so, if they scan, um, if you hold your computer or your phone up to the scan me, um, it should pop up a, um, a document and then you can just, there's recipe cards in there. So you can just go ahead and enter your um, recipe card right there. But yes, if you're having any trouble, feel free to um, email uh, the details to Holly and we can get that added. Um, it's always nice to, um, we, we said healthy and easy, um, so it's uh, not, too, not too much uh, work, um, but it's always nice to have some new recipes to, to share. And I think Tatiana will have some to share with us also. So. Yeah. And sometimes if it looks like maybe put, because I know I have recipes that look complicated because there are a lot of spices or something, but they're not really. It's just that by the time I write them out, but if once you would read through the whole thing, you'd be like, oh. That's not, so maybe if that's the case in point, say looks tedious, but great to make or something, you know, because that happens. But I think that'd be fun, like tonight, where we can actually share some of our experiences with different things. So the recipes from tonight's uh, gift ideas, are those out on this too? Uh, they're on the website. So if you go to, um, uh, I believe it's the events and action page down at the bottom where we have our events or our, our meeting listings, uh, you can download the, it's right there. Okay. Uh, and then also I sent an email this morning. Um, so if you're not getting those, let me know because it was attached to that as well. Good deal. All right. Anyone have anything to add? Yes, there it is. No. I want to thank you guys for your, I wasn't as detailed, but Tara and Sarah and Lori, your ideas. And I think I'm going to make everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they were all yeah, good uh, recipes and ideas. Definitely. Yeah. Thank, you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, lots of great stuff. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you uh, to all the creative presenters tonight and um, for everyone uh, joining us and for all of your involvement through 2020, a challenging year. And we look forward to connecting with you um, in January of 2021 uh, to kick off a, a year full of action um, as it pertains to environmental issues in our area. So thank you. Have a great night and um, we'll see you guys in January. Hi. Happy holidays. 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 Happy holidays.